front one as well as everyone scurries to their position. Some of the findings uh, were that uh, the former Premier Alison Redford and her office used public resources inappropriately, specifically Chris, that would be using planes for partisan purposes, as we just heard Alberta PC uh, President uh, Jim McCormick addressing, and also for personal use, to fly uh, her daughter and her daughter's friends around, go to a funeral in Vancouver. Um, that uh, the former premier tried to turn public space into living space. That means she requested a sort of luxury suite in a federal, be built in a federal building. That suite is there, but it's going to be used for meetings instead. Uh, the Auditor General was very blunt in blaming all of these infractions on an aura of power around Premier Redford and basically saying that her office acted uh, as if it could operate without question. And the people below it said, well, you know, if that's what the Premier wants, then that's what we have to do. The uh, Auditor General has made six recommendations uh, to basically revamp the travel system to uh, add oversight and basically say that policies need to be clarified to make sure that there is no chance that this will happen again. Okay, Carolyn, just briefly, we heard uh, in this report that that uh, the Auditor General said that there was a, an attempt to try and make it so that uh, Alison Redford didn't appear to be responsible. What's the reaction been to that, if any? Well, you know, uh, that is what the Auditor General found as in, in the report, but what is happening today is that Alison Redford is basically being blamed by her colleagues for sure. Um, there is a, the pre current premier says that the trust has been broken. We've heard her party say that uh, the trust with Albertans have been broken, and they are pointing the finger right back at Alison Redford and only at Alison Redford. The blame hasn't, hasn't spread yet. Of course, the opposition is doing exactly the opposite. Alison Redford is gone. They need a new target. And so they are saying that this is a systemic problem, an entitlement okay. problem within the party. All right, thanks, Carolyn. Carolyn thanks. Dunn, uh, CBC in Calgary tonight. So does Alison Redford's resignation put the issue to rest, or should more people, as she was indicating, in her inner circle be held to account? Well, joining me now from Edmonton is Wild Rose Party MLA Carrie Toll. Toll, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, Alison Redford did resign her seat yesterday. Now today, you're calling out the Finance Minister, Doug Horner. Why? Well, because the Minister of Finance and Treasury Board is directly responsible for the fleet. But even more appropriately is that he is directly responsible for taxpayer resources. He is the check and the balance on every single ministry because he has the second most powerful ministry in the government. He also sits on executive council and he also is in cabinet. And he and the ministers um, should be able to have a check and balance to ensure taxpayers are protected. All right. Well, you heard um, Carolyn Dunn, and you've obviously read the report that this aura of power that, uh, that nobody wanted to question the premier's office about these kinds of uh, spending. Uh, so you're not you're saying that's just not good enough at this point. No, it's not good enough. And, and quite frankly, what it really is, is that after 43 years, the government has become so used to their entitlements, no one thought to question or even just look the other way. Um, the, the PC party right now is is distancing themselves from, from the Premier, yet supported her right up until her resignation. The Cabinet gave her a standing ovation uh, and, and in the House, not even, uh, you know, that 20 weeks ago. Nine months ago, supported her in a 77% approval rating, and now they're all saying she did this um, completely on her own. It is, no one believes that. Albertans don't believe that. And I don't believe even the finance minister believes that either. I think they're all looking for a scapegoat, and Ms. Redford is convenient. Okay, now, the report has already been referred to the RCMP for possible investigation. What do you make of that decision? Well, we called for an RCMP investigation as well two weeks ago when the first portion of the report had been leaked. Um, we believe that there is criminal wrongdoing. Absolutely, there's a role for the RCMP to play and make sure that all of those are held to account. But let's keep in mind, the Auditor General's report, the scope of it was limited to the Premier and the Premier's office. He did use language that insinuated that there were other ministers involved. We know at least nine other ministers traveled on government planes to partisan um, party um, events. That is unacceptable. We know Sandra Jansen took her daughter on the plane. She defended that position in the legislature. We also know Donna Kennedy Glantz uh, took the plane to a partisan 
party event. These are two uh, uh, former cabinet ministers. Absolutely. Well, Sandra Johnson is she's a current still, she's cabinet current minister. Cabinet, yeah. Cal Dallas did the same thing. And so the reality of it is, is that this is not an Allison Redford problem. This is an office of the premier problem and a cabinet and executive council that has no check and balance. And the reality of it is that this exact same situation could happen today with or with, without Ms. Redford being there. All right, so the Auditor General did say there have to be better rules, better enforcement of those rules. From the Wild Rose perspective, is that enough? Would, would you sell off this fleet of airplanes because they're subject to this kind of abuse? Yeah, we absolutely would. We've seen in other provinces when they've uh, removed the fleet, um, there's more accountability when you have to buy a commercial ticket yourself and ask for reimbursement. You wouldn't have the ability to pay for your children. Um, also, in this case, um, taking commercial flights would have saved Alberta taxpayers mm -hmm. millions of dollars. And again, that's exactly why Minister Horner should resign. He did not protect the taxpayer dollars. He did not protect the people of Alberta. And he did not do his job in holding the premier and any staff member, any person using taxpayer resources inappropriately. Okay. To two years, I think, now till uh, another election campaign has to be called in Alberta. Tell me how, what you think about this issue and how likely it is to continue to foment over that period of time. Oh, I actually think this issue is uh, far from over. Like I said, the Auditor General's report right now was limited in its scope, but not a single Albertan um, believes that this was one person mm. who had the total power. You have two scenarios here. You either have a Premier who had uh, complete and utter control, just like a dictatorship, or you had a Premier who could do whatever he want, or whatever she wanted, and Cabinet um, looked the other way. Either way, it's a terrible scenario, and Albertans are, are, are the ones paying the price. This is not over. Uh, Minister Horner has a lot to answer for, but so does the PC party. Um, everyone finds it hard to believe that as these MLAs showed up on government planes to a party fundraiser, yeah. no one ever had a conversation the, about the, this. The, the reason, reason I ask in part is that with the RCMP, if they decide to investigate, that it makes it difficult, for example, for any other kind of public hearing to be done into exactly the kinds of questions that you're raising. It does, and that's why at this point in time we're asking for the um, RCMP to do their part of the process while we continue to review the report and, and um, evaluate whether or not there should go further. Um, the government could solve this problem. The government could actually fully disclose all expenses. They could fully disclose everything that um, the Auditor General identified as a problem. We even hear about the Sky Palace. The Auditor General specifically has said that the Sky Palace continues to be built. Sure, they put some desk furniture in the bedroom, and now they're calling that a mean meeting room, but it is still a residential um, building of, uh, of the mm. Sky Palace. Nothing has changed. Minister McIver did not kill this, neither did Minister Drysdale, and it's still going on today. Well, it will be an interesting couple of weeks. Carrie Toll, thanks so much for taking Thank the you. time to talk to us today. Thank you. All right, we heard from the politicians, and now we want to hear what you think. If you have comments on this or anything you hear on the show, you can be part of our conversation. On your screen are all the ways you can get in touch with us through Facebook, Twitter, email, and, of course, online. We'll be posting some of your action in our comment box throughout the show.